2019 was a very memorable year for SC Cincinnati as it marked the debut season for SCC in Major League Soccer after spending the last three years in the United Soccer League. After being talk of the soccer world for a couple weeks, everything unraveled at the end and the team finished not only last in the Eastern Division, but in all of Major League Soccer with a record of 6, 22, and 6. So what happens? Let's take a look. MLS put SCC through the gauntlet to start the year. They got whipped 4-1 against the Seattle Sounders, but managed to draw a tie with Atlanta United in their second game of the year. That all led up to their home debut in match 3 of the 2019 MLS season. They were playing the reigning and defending Western Conference champions, the Portland Timbers, in front of a sold out crowd at Nipper Stadium. This was SCC's first ever MLS home opener, and they did not disappoint. They blanked the Portland Timbers 3-0 and sent SCC fans into a frenzy. As the naive early season SCC fan that I was back then, life couldn't get any better, and it didn't. After beating the Revolution on the road, they lost to the Philadelphia Union and that sent the team into a downward spiral that they never recovered from. Things got so bad that Alan Koch was released during the middle of the season. Yohan DeMay then took over as interim head coach filling in for Alan Koch and he did get a 2-1 win over the Montreal Impact on May 11. This marked the team's first win since they beat the Revolution back in March. That win however supplied SCC fans with a false sense of hope as they would go on another streak of not winning any games until July 6th when they finally beat the Houston Dynamo, this time by a score of 3-2 at Nipper Stadium. Well, I followed up that one with a victory of the Chicago Fire, another winless streak soon followed. And eventually, Jeff Burton handed over the GM duties to Gerard Nishkamp. Nishkamp then hired Ron Yon to be the team's new permanent head coach. Now, keep in mind, SEC was four years old at this point, having played three years in the USL and this being their first year in MLS. And they had had four head coaches, with three of those coaching changes coming in their debut season in Major League Soccer. The team seemed to find a little bit of a groove under Jans and they would notch their final win in the season under Jans, a 1-0 win over the Montreal Impact late in September. Aside from the coaching turmoil that plagued the entire season, most of the players on the roster underperformed. The USL guys that were brought up from last year's team to join the MLS roster were either loaned out or rarely saw time on the playing field. The lone exception was Emmanuel Ledesma who further cemented himself as the best player in FCC short history. The player with the most criticism this season by far was Fernando Adi. He was supposed to be SEC's big piece to their Major League roster when he was signed last year. He was also supposed to help bring home the USL title for the team in 2018 during the swan song season in that league. That did not happen and his 2019 season got off to a very problematic start. His lackadaisical play on the field, his injury problems, and the suspension that stemmed from a DWI charge earlier in the season soured the relationship between him, the fans, and the team in general. Things have gotten so bad that he filed a complaint with the MLS Players Union about his poor treatment from FCC. Honestly, the team just needs to cut him or eat the money or do something because this guy has done nothing for FC Cincinnati during his time with the team. In my opinion, some of the lone bright spots for FCC during this season were, of course, Ledesma, as well as Rashawn Dolly, Tommy McCabe, and Frankie Amaya. They could use a little polish, but the potential is there, and with the right nurturing, they could be the next breakout superstars for Major League Soccer and SC Cincinnati. Also, Teton did a very good job as goalie, taking over the starting duties from Spencer Ritchie toward the end of the season. So where does SCC go from here now that the season's over? The only way they can go is up at this point. They set a record for most goals allowed in MLS history this season. Hopefully that does not occur in 2020 and Nishkin can find the right players and pieces to plug in the Jan system to bring a winning soccer culture to Cincinnati. We were used to that in the USL, we expected that in MLS and did not get it. Hopefully that gets corrected heading in 2020 and SCC can make a run at the MLS Cup. Thanks for watching.